How would you feel about adding another Louisa Rise to the Twins lineup for 2023 on that and a potential addition of a former MVP who may not be all that wanted in free agency? It's all coming up on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Thursday, December 1st, and I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. Thanks for making Locked On Twins your first listen every single day on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Again, this is Nash Walker, three seasons hosting a daily podcast on the Minnesota Twins. Four seasons writing about the Twins at TwinsDaily.com. How would you feel about adding another Louisa Rise to the middle of the Twins lineup? Sounds pretty exciting to me. That plus a former MVP is on the open market after a non-tender. Is there anything there potentially on the Twins side? And should they want this former MVP in free agency? We'll start with Luis Arise type bat, who's a free agent this offseason. Michael Brantley. Michael Brantley. If you're a longtime Twins fan or not even, you probably know the name because he played for Cleveland. He played against the Twins quite a bit in his time with Cleveland. Was very, very good for Cleveland. Left-handed hitter, contact-oriented, you know, ball and play, dynamo. Michael Brantley, and, and it's reflected in his numbers. Over the last five seasons, his season was ended short in 2022 because of shoulder surgery. If you combine the last five years going back to 2018, Michael Brantley has hit 307 with a 367 on base percentage, and he slugged 465. That's an OPS at 832, an OPS plus at 124. 180 walks, 237 strikeouts. He's left-handed. He's going to be 36 in May, so he's 35 and coming off shoulder surgery on the open market. Played for Houston the last four years, two of those years all-star level seasons. He's been terrific, essentially his entire career. I love this type of player, and I think a lot of a lot of baseball fans, whether you are new school, old school, whatever you are, you love this type of player. And I think that's why almost everybody loves Luis Arise. Like my White Sox fan friends think Luis Arise is amazing. And <laughs> Luis Arise is very good. But that style of play, like that type of hitter, there's something about that in today's game that's so mesmerizing. And then you have the on-base percentage to boot, drawing walks, getting on, you know, hitting for contact, driving in runs. Luis Arise has been terrific with runners in scoring position in his career. Michael Brantley, he'll draw walks and he just doesn't strike out. Over the last five seasons combined, 10.6% strikeout rate, 11% strikeout rate, 8% walk rate. Unreal. He he is an extreme version of contact oriented and he's got some power. Like he hit 29 home. No, I'm sorry. In the last five seasons, he's combined for 57 home runs. He hit 22 home runs in 2019 over the last three seasons combined. Not as much. He's only hit 18 in those three years and they've been cut short by injury this year with the shoulder. And then he only played 121 games in 2021. So he's getting up there. He's getting up there. That has to be part of this equation. He's a free agent. And I wonder with him, if there's too much hype around what once was like, you don't know, he's coming back from a shoulder surgery at 35. There are question marks here. Defensively, Think about him as a DH. He's going to be a a likely DH for 2023. That's how you have to think about Michael Brantley. Could Could you stick him in left field? Perhaps, and for the Twins, they don't necessarily need a left handed corner outfielder, right? That should be a strength. And we went over this with other guys on the free agent market with Mitch Hanniger and, and, you know, with Cody Bellinger today as well. They don't necessarily need that. That should be a strength, but they are in that position, this envious position, I think, in some ways, where they don't have enough holes to fill where they can't focus on other spots, right? You got to fill shortstop, you need to fill catcher. But beyond that, they have flexibility to do a lot of different things and they can add whoever they want at any position and you can shuffle guys around you can trade Max Kepler you can do different things with this roster if you like Michael Brantley you can bring him in and not worry about the repercussions not every team can say that 
that's not a, a great place to be because on paper, the Twins are you know a hovering 500 team as currently constructed by Zips. It's not like they have this dynamo roster where they can bring in anybody or you know there, there are spots that are filled. This is a roster that has they could fill the team today, but they could legitimately improve at every single position. They could get better everywhere, you know, in center, backup center fielder. They could get better in center. They could get better in right and left field. They can uproot whoever, basically, in the corner outfield spots. And Kepler, Kirilov, Larnick, none of those guys are locked into spots for 2023. So that's that's an envious position to be in. I, I could see a scenario where the Twins trade Max Kepler and they bring in Michael Brantley as a different type of bat and hopefully a higher upside bat and a Luis Arise type bat. You're basically adding another Luis Arise to the lineup if you get a healthy Michael Brantley. And healthy, you're hoping he's healthy. But that's imagine that. Imagine that's what you're getting. And because he's coming off a year where he had shoulder surgery, he's 35 years old, he can't really play in the field anymore, the market is going to be dampened. It's a likely one-year, you know, 13 to $15 million deal, I think, for Michael Brantley. So you can get him out of value, certainly. And if he is healthy, you know, for a majority of the season, you could you could sign Brantley, and because he's he's his value is lower because of injury and and ineffectiveness in the field, you can sign Brantley and sign Carlos Correa, and then you're looking at a top four of Luis Arise, Carlos Correa, Michael Brantley, and Byron Buxton, and then Jorge Polanco at fifth, and then Jose Miranda sixth. The lineup possibilities there are really fun to think about with some serious upside. So you have that contact, you have the thump, you got that alternating right, left, right, left, which I love. The possibilities are endless in my mind for Michael Brantley, but it's just, can he stay healthy? Can he be on the field? A former MVP, also a free agent. Let's compare these two. Who would be a better investment, more upside after this word from betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. I prefer desktop. But whichever you prefer, if you like to use your phone, you like to use the computer, you want to use your iPad, you want to use your Android, whatever you're looking for, BetOnline.net is compatible across all platforms. It really is so easy to use, and it's the best place to go. It's the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis this season for football, for basketball, for hockey. Whatever you're looking for, they have you covered at BetOnline. BetOnline is where the game starts. Thanks again for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Michael Brantley, intriguing, intriguing on the free agent market. I've never... At least since I've been like covering this very closely, baseball and the Twins specifically, I, I haven't seen a fall off as hard as Cody Bellinger. And he is, I think you can make the argument, he's the most interesting free agent of the last five years. Like how, how do you think about Cody Bellinger? He's going to sign a one-year deal. He's a Boris client, but he's 27 years old. He's 27. And he is an MVP, a rookie of the year. Cody Bellinger's first three seasons in the majors for the Dodgers, he hit 278, on base at 369, slugged 559 for an OPS at 928 with elite defense in the outfield. He can play center, elite defense across the outfield. He was an 8.6 win player in 20, 2019. So to put that into perspective, Aaron Judge was a 10 win player. It might have been even 11 war. Let me see what Judge finished at in 2022 10.6 Cody Bellinger 8.6 in 2019 and think about how good judge was and he judge was two wins better than Bellinger but what a year I mean MVP he won rookie of the year in 2017 MVP in his age 23 season you're thinking this is you know he's a superstar he's an absolute superstar and it's been slowly declining since in the three seasons since Cody Bellinger won the MVP award he's been a shell He's been a legitimate shell of his former self. And it's 
it is staggering. I think the Dodgers are staggered and they non-tendered him and probably thinking what happened, what happened here. And I think the baseball world is thinking that too. I certainly am in the three years since he won MVP. He's a 200 hitter, 203 OBP is 272 and he's slugging 376 for an OPS at 648 OPS plus 74 in his last 295 games. He is an OPS plus at 74. That is, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And now he's a free agent and he's a Boris client. I'm sure Boris was thinking in 2019, oh, here comes another 350 million for Cody Bellinger. No, it's it's going to be a one-year deal. I think almost certainly for Bellinger, it benefits him and for the team. Like, how would you commit more than one year to this guy? The What he has going for him is he is an outstanding defender in the outfield. He can play center, which should be attractive to the Twins. I think he's going to be paid, though, and he should. I'm not saying he shouldn't. Like, he has this MVP level upside, even though it's he's three years removed. 2019 was a long time ago. He does have a shoulder thing. Boris is trying to push the shoulder as, oh, he doesn't have the strength back in his shoulder. He doesn't have the strength back. He did, a, like, an arm curl, I think, with Kike Hernandez after he hit a home run in the 2020 postseason or in a, in a big play. Apparently, that aggravated the shoulder, and it's gotten even worse since the COVID season. Over the last two years, Cody Bellinger is hitting 193 with an on-base percentage at 256 and an OPS at 611. OPS plus 64 the last two seasons for Cody Bellinger. To put that into perspective, Gilberto Celestino had a rough year at the plate, the power department, had an OPS at 615. So Cody Bellinger has been... Gilberto Celestino, who Gilberto Celestino was at the plate in 2022 for the last two years combined. That's Cody Bellinger. Now he's a free agent and you're thinking, what is he worth? Like, what is he worth on a one-year deal? Is he worth 12, 13, four? how, how, I, I just don't know how you could think of him as that type of player. Cause if you sign him, it's going to give you good defense. Like he's going to give you quality defense, but over the last three years combined, he's barely above replacement level. You know, overall, it's he was a, a negative one and a half win player in 2021. How do you even think about somebody like him at this point? He was he was above replacement level in 2022, but he was dead even dead replacement level in the COVID season plus 2021. Over the last three years, he's been worth a grand total of 1.2 wins above replacement. You're really gonna pay that dude 12, 13, 14 million? That's one side of this argument. The other side of this argument is what if he finds it again? What if it is his shoulder? You know, what if he what if he locks in and he figures out a way to catch back up to fastballs and he becomes that guy again with elite defense and elite power and elite hitter drawing walks, you know, not striking out as much. Then you got a the value of the century potentially on a one-year deal, right? Like an MVP on a one-year deal. In your outfield, you took a flyer essentially for 12, 13, 14, whatever it is, million, and he's an MVP level player. That can change your season. That can change your season. That upside is tantalizing. Is it the shoulder? There's this mystery with him. There's this mystery because he's only 27. It would be a lot different if he wasn't. If he was 32, 33, he's over that curve. You're thinking, okay, not that interesting. You know, burn bright, faded away, but this stuff doesn't happen. You don't go from having an a thousand, you know, one thousand thirty-five OPS in twenty nineteen to a six fifty-four OPS in twenty twenty-two. It's like almost half. It's crazy. So if I'm a front office, I would get wrapped up in both of those narratives. I would get wrapped up in narrative A, which is this guy's cooked. He's done. The, that was you know his first three years. I don't know if it's his shoulder, whatever it is. He's not catching up to fastballs. He's not that guy offensively, and I can't rely on him offensively. But defensively, he's a good player, but not good enough for, for what he's going to get paid on a one-year deal. The flip side of that is he's a good defensive player. He can play center, and if we gets even a little bit of his offense back, he's going to provide excess value on a one-year deal because he does provide value defensively. That's where you're thinking. That's where I'd be thinking about Cody Bellinger and how I am thinking about Cody Bellinger. So where does this all wrap in with the Twins? Because the Twins are on more of a budget, I think they have, and self-imposed, they they have to be more sure about these one-year 15, 16, or whatever it's going to be. I don't know what he's going to sign for. Maybe one for 14. I'm curious on uh, Mr. Becker's meeting here. We'll pull that up. But you have to be sure if you're the Twins, if you're going to spend that money, 
that he's going to provide you at least enough value where you can swallow it. And he would because he can back up Byron Buxton in center field. He would do it defensively, but is he going to be so bad offensively that you can't even like, it's just, you can't play him because the Dodgers couldn't even play him in the playoffs. One year, 18 million is the median for Cody Bellinger. On the one hand, that seems ridiculously high. And on the other, that's, Ooh, that's exciting. Ooh, we get Cody Bellinger for one year and 18 million. So put that into, put that into comparison with Michael Brantley who's expected to get one year and 12 and a half million. He's eight years older, uh, can't play really the field anymore, but if he's healthy, his bat is going to be excellent. You know that. Cody Bellinger is 27. He's coming off a couple of years where he was terrible, but he's a former MVP, former rookie of the year. He can play center field adequately and above average, and he's very good in the corners, and he was once a very good hitter. Those two com- compared to each other is it's an interesting case. Like, if you could get, let's just round it. Let's say one year, fifteen million for one of these two. Who would you? Who would make more sense for the Twins to sign? One year, fifteen million. They're both left-handed. I think Bellinger for the Twins because he can play center field, because he has more roster utility, because the Twins have enough guys who don't have roster utility. I think Bellinger, and then there's that upside factor of it. I could also see the scenario where he hits like he has over the last two years, and you're watching and thinking, like, who is this? Why would they sign this guy? Why is this guy playing? I can already see the tweets on my feed. What <laughs> Cody Bellinger? He's terrible. Sit him. Why is Rocco playing Bellinger? Well, they paid him $15 million to play in 2023. I can already see it like unfolding in my head if the Twins were to do something like this. I don't think they will. But it's an interesting exercise to look. The safer it's it's weird because neither feels like safe. And you could honestly make the argument that Bellinger's safer, even though he has a shoulder thing too. It's not like as cut and dry as Brantley getting shoulder surgery. Bellinger's a little further removed from that. But it feels like Bellinger's the safer option because he can play defense. Like if Brantley can play 50 games and left, that'll be that'll be good. You you hope for that. But he's mostly going to DH, I think, in 2023, especially after the shoulder. Bellinger, the floor somehow feels higher because he can play defense. But then you look at Brantley and the floor feels higher because he can actually hit. And Bellinger hasn't hit since 2019, pre-COVID. Like, think about how long ago that was. So it's um, these two fascinating to me. Like, I I think there's going to be some reactions when Cody Bellinger makes more than Michael Brantley on the free agent market, which I think is a high likelihood. There's going to be some reactions like, what? Are you kidding me? Bellinger made more than Brantley? Like, that's – Bellinger hasn't been good in years. And there's I think there's going to be some reactions like that if, if that's how it plays out. For the Twins specifically, I do think Bellinger makes more sense for them. But I just – I don't know how I would feel about them committing $15 million to him when – they have you know flexibility to do other things. Now, if you trade Max Kepler, you trade away Kepler and his eight and a half million for prospects or for minimal salary in return. I'm working off the assumption that this payroll is going to be about 150 million. Hopefully, it's more. And if it's more, then Bellinger makes more sense. But if it's going to be about 150 million, 15 million for Belly is like he would be tied for the highest paid player on the team with Byron Buxton at that point. <laughs> That's that would be tougher to swallow, I think. And if it at any in any juncture takes you out of the market for other higher upside players, even though Bellinger could have upside, like clearly, maybe the most upside on the market, but on the flip side, does he really? It's just so, so interesting. Then I wouldn't I wouldn't be hip on it. But he can play center, which I really like. That's something that I value. But if he can't hit, like Alberto Celestino can play center. And and not at the level of of Bellinger, but if Bellinger can't hit, like what's the actual value of that? You you have Celestino who also can hit, but he can play a decent center field. And it's like, is it worth it? Is he worth it at that point? You'd have to be more sure that he's going to bounce back. Baseball reference, their projections for 2023. And a lot of this is based on what he's coming out of, but they have him hitting 212 with a 278 on base percentage and slugging 379 for an OPS at 657. That's a Alberto Celestino like season. So 657 OPS. Let's see what Celestino's projection is for 2023 for his OPS. 657 for Judge, 652 for Celestino. And and Bellinger's going to get 15 million potentially in free agency. 
that's the part of this where I'm like, is that even worth it for the Twins? And then for Brantley, coming off shoulder surgery, a little bit of a gamble, but I at least have more confidence that he's going to hit if he's healthy. But can I? Because he's 35, going to be 36, and he's coming off shoulder surgery, and he hasn't played very many games the last three years. Can you be confident he's going to hit? Question marks. That's why they're getting one-year deals. I think that's why they're both going to get one-year deals. Otherwise, you wouldn't if there weren't question marks. You would get multi-year deals. I think for Bellinger, it benefits him to sign a one-year deal. For Brantley, he'll probably be looking for a two-year deal or a three-year deal from Houston. Likely is not to get it. Uh, I think he might go back to Houston and, and just like return and, and be that guy for them. But it's a possibility that that he doesn't. And in that case, yeah, he's intriguing. He's intriguing. So is Bellinger. So is Bellinger. It would be a major storyline of the season if Cody Bellinger were to sign. Whoever he signs with, people will be watching him all year because this stuff just doesn't happen. It does not happen. Do MVPs fall off? Do Rookie of the Year's fall off? Absolutely. But like this, this soon, like to become what Cody Bellinger has become non-tendered this soon at 27 when you were a nine-win player a couple years ago? No, like that's unheard of. And that's why it's it's going to be it's going to be fascinating where he goes and and how he's viewed and how his season is evaluated. And then for Brantley, it's just it's less intriguing, but not really because if you get him on a one year, thirteen million dollar deal, and he's Michael Brantley at the plate, you're adding another Luis Arise to your lineup, and that's uh, man. Fun to think about, isn't it? Thanks so much for making Lockdown Twins your first listen today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Brantley Bellinger. We'll we'll get to Joey Gallo as well. It's like kind of similar to Cody, Cody Bellinger. We'll get to to Joey Gallo and some other outfielders in this free agent cycle. These two and Michael Conforto. There's like this group of left-handed hitters that are question marks. They're going to sign one-year deals, most likely that uh, the Twins could be involved in because we've seen them try to get involved on these value one-year deals before. Let me know what you think in the comments, Brantley, Bellinger specifically, and thank you so much. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts on, the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Winter meetings start Sunday. We got a lot coming for those next week. Join me. I'll be back Friday. Conforto, Gallo, interesting, just like these two were. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Go Twins.